Be'ezrat Hashem, Na'aseh V'natzliach. I want to welcome you to another session of our Parashat HaShavua, uh, learning as we embark on uh, Parashat Lech Lecha. Tonight's class is called Living with Abraham. Very, very interesting lens on the Parsha, and very, very interesting uh, outlook on the way we're going to look at Sefer Bereshit for the next... Uh, for the next few months. Uh, before we get started, I wanna first say a huge thank you to Rabbi Kievman for allowing us the use of the space. Uh, beautiful space, the way that it is, but you should see outside. You should see this new edifice that's out here. Wow, may we merit to give classes there as well. Um, also want to give uh, some honorable mentions and dedications to the following people, Baruch Hashem. The list is starting to get, uh, is starting to populate. Anybody who still wants to get uh, involved, uh, whether it's for Ilu Nishmat, Refua Shelema, Zivug, Rechabat Zacha, whatever it is, get in touch with me so we can uh, accommodate you, so we can send up Torah to the Shemaim for whoever it is that needs it. Uh, may, the, may this class be in honor of Jacqueline Bat Alia and Tova Shindel Bat. Alta, Bezat uh, Hashem, this uh, class will be to the Ilu Nishmat of David Ben Zohari, Eniv Ben Rina, Michel Ben Zohari, Viv Ben Vivi, Avraham Yosha Ben Sultana, Simon Ben Alia, Meir Ben Rebecca, Mazal Bat Luna, Sultana Bat Frecha, Shaul Yosef Ben Garaz, Rachel Bat Alice, Shalom Ben Zohara, Yaakov Ben Sol, Yehuda Ben Aharon, Brindle Bat Meir Dov, Kranche Bat Yehuda. Also for Refua Shelema of Amram Ben Zohara, David Ben Alia, Daniel Bat Mazar, Karen Chava Badona, Gabriel Ben Mashiach, Karen uh, Nir Ben Yehudit, I have you on the list twice, Karen. Nir Ben Yehudit, Heleni Orna Bat Chen Chana. Also, Zivu Gagun, Mishorish Nishmatam, Tu, Inbal Bat Jaklin, Gai Ben Dina, Eli Ben Shula, Tamar Adina Bat Devorah Mirror, Yehudit Ben Sarah, and Shana Henshi Bat Leah Gittel. Yosef ben Sarah, Shaget, Shaked bat Revital, Shir bat Revital. Also, Bracha v'atzlacha uh, to Abraham ben Daniel, Abraham ben Violet Chaya, Yehuda Leif ben Tov Shindo, Gai Shelomo ben Shimon, um, Tamar Adina ben Devor Mirol, Joseph Dornbush and family, Dov, Shmuel and Pesi Penina and family, Shalom ben Chaya Carmela, Yael Teppenberg and family, and Batya Miriam Bat Sar. Also, that this should be Lesof Herayon Veleda Kala to Enav Bat Larissa, and Sarah Miriam Bat Heina Rivka. So that's our regular list, but tonight, Baruch Hashem, we have some sponsors uh, that are going to kick off our learning in the new place. Anonymous is dedicating tonight's class to the following names for Bracha, Hatzacha, Good Health, Happiness, Shiduch, Zivu, for those who need it. And in particular, to Shprinza Bat Rochel, Yachit Bat Shprinza, Zalman Aharon Ben Shprinza, Sarah Fredo Bat, bat Enya, Tevya Saadia Ben Tzima Tzivya, Yoshua Yaakov Levi Ben Devor Miral, and Rafu Shalema for Yisachar Kohen Ben Rochel, and success with the business for him and for Gizel Bel Bat Chaya Sara and an easier, more lucrative Parnasa. Also, uh, this class is generously sponsored by Dovid and Karen Barman. Shashem Vayechotam Vesamechotam. Thank you so much. You should all know that the reason why we're here is because the Barmans took it upon themselves to let us know that there's a wonderful community in Highland Lakes. You should check it out. And wouldn't you know it, our previous space is going through some issues. And I just, literally, I just shot out by text. Hey, Dovid, do you know anywhere we can maybe take the class over for a few days, for a few weeks? He's like, I have a perfect new home for you. And we are here. So they are sponsoring tonight's class in, uh, in honor of Rabbi Moshe Kivman of Chabad Chayil. And uh, yours truly, Sharon Linkri. May they partner to spread much Torah. Amen. Also, Batya Miriam Batsara is sponsoring tonight's class for the success, for the successful release of the hostages 
for, for the end of the war and blessings for all the people that are coming to the class on a weekly basis. Shashem Barech Hotchem is Sameach Hotchem for all that are getting involved, for all that are sponsoring, and of course for all the people in attendance. Thank you so much. As we do the Membet Masaot, as every year we go to a new community and we enlighten and we grip, we enlighten the place that we go to and we bring new people to get attached to our learning, to our learning family. Shashem Barech Hotchem is Sameach Hotchem. You know the, the there's nothing that makes Hashem happier than learning but even more so consistent learning. Learning that you don't let go. Every lesson makes the bond stronger, makes the, the, the connection uh, stronger. So, Shashem Barech Hotchem, Sameach Hotchem, and may Hashem pay you a thousand folds for all the efforts that you make to learn Torah on a regular basis. All right, let's get started. Let's begin learning. L'Shem Shamaim U'Besimcha. Parashat Lech Lecha. I would like to read the first few pesukim, if you uh, indulge me a bit for just week, so we can have just some background, just some pesukim fill up the air, and then we'll start the class. This week's parasha, not uh, not uh, uh, by design, but literally by chance. But there is no chance, but divine providence, I would say is a perfect lesson from last week. If you, li if you were part of last week's lesson, or if you heard the lesson that we did last week, which was, why did God create the world? We asked those big questions. Why are we here? Why did He create the world? What's the purpose in life? And we answered it. Baruch Hashem, we gave a bunch of beautiful answers. By Hashgacha Pratit, tonight, the class, is going to be a perfect continuation to the foundation that we laid out last week. Parashat Lech Lecha continues to answer that question. Continue to answer all those questions, but with an additional layer of understanding, with an additional layer, with another Torah lens on life. We'll begin with the Pesukim, and then we'll start to peel the onion. Vayomer Adonai El Avram Lech Lecha Me'artzecha Me'ladecha Betavicha very famous pasuk where we see that Hashem tells Avram here Avram is without a hey his name is Avram and just for those that uh, were in the Mar Cheshvan class Ram Cheshvan, Avram it also ties in one way or the other we can make a connection go for yourself go forth get up and go and leave your land, your nationality, the house of your father, to a land that I'll show you. I will make you a great nation. And I'll bless you. And I will, uh, I will make your name big. In other words, you'll be famous. You'll be known. And you'll also be a blessing. You'll be able to bless people, and the blessing will come to fruition. And whoever blesses you, I will bless. And whoever curses you, I will curse. And all the families, all the nations of the world will be blessed because of you. Avram left his home. He followed the instruction of God. And his cousin Lot went with him. Avram is 75 years old when he left Haran. Avram took his wife, which at the moment is called Sarai, Ve'et Lot ben Achiv, so he's his nephew, I'm sorry, his nephew. And Lot, his nephew, Ve'et kol rechusham asher achashu, and all their personal belongings that they had, which means that they had, uh, you know, they, they had money. Ve'et ha-nefesh asher asu becharan, and the nefesh asher asu becharan, and all the people that they converted when they were in Haran, 
ויצאו ללכת ארצה כנען, and they want to go to the land of כנען, ויבואו ארצה כנען. You want me to open that for you? No. We'll stop here. Just open it. Of course. And it's bothering, so put it in a cup or something, please. I'm, yeah, whoever's in charge of the air conditioners? Okay. All right. So those are the opening Pesukim for Parashat Lech Lecha, the introduction to Avraham Avinu. And we'll begin with the famous line that we like to say all the time from Admor Azaken, Baal Atanya. Baal Atanya says, Tzarich Lichyot Imazman. You have to live with the times. And... It was interpreted that Admor Zaken was saying, Lichyotim Azman, meaning to live with the time, meaning in Parashat HaShavua, to live with the Parsha. But even more so, guys, the pretzel bags are driving me nuts. If you want, <laughs> just like put them in a cup or something. I can't hear that all class long. Sorry. It's too cold. They're working on it. A lot of technical difficulties, it's a new place. We'll get there. It's a good class, for sure. And we merit. Okay. So when we said, Lichyotim Azman, you have to live with the time. Then you have to live with the Torah portion, meaning whatever is happening in this week's Torah portion, with Torah, the, the, the Parsha to Shavua, everything that's happening in your life is embedded in the Parsha. They go further to say, this is something that we never said before, this is a chidush for this year's class. Meaning, in general, whatever is going on in the parasha is what's happening in your life. But if you want to know particularly what's going on on a daily basis, go to that particular section of the day and read the Rashi. Meaning, Rishon, Shani, Shlishi, Revi, Hamishi, Shishi, and Shvi'i, each part of the parsha, the first aliyah, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, and the seventh, whatever is going on in that uh, uh, section, including with the commentary of Rashi, is going to have exactly what's going on in your life. And it says, and this is the true meaning of lichyot, to live, mamash ima parashat, mamash live with the parsha. Imagine you wake up, what's tomorrow? Tomorrow's Tuesday, you open up the third section of, uh, of the parasha on Tuesday, you read about Abraham fighting with the kings, going to, uh, uh, going to Avimelech, and all of a sudden it's, it has to do with you. How is it possible? You'll only find out if you do it. Hashem will reveal it, will reveal it to you only if you do it. I can't uh, look into the future and tell you what the third aliyah is going to mean to your life tomorrow. This is an avodah that you need to do. And it says, Lichyot mamashima parasha. To see how the parsha has an influence on your life the entire day. Furthermore, the fact that we are living with the parsha, that means that this week, who, who are we living with? We're living with Abraham Avinu. We have a guest in our life. We have a, somebody who's going to be part of our day-to-day -day lives for the next few weeks. And it's going to be Avraham Avinu. Shebechol v'yom v'yom chayim anu im Avraham Avinu alav shalom. Now that Avraham Avinu is making an entrance in Parashat Lech Lecha, we're going to be living with Avraham. And because we're going to be living with Avraham, we're going to be learning from Avraham. And it's incumbent upon us that now that Abraham Avinu is part of our day-to-day -day life, we're living with the parasha, we're living with Abraham, to number one, get connected to the attributes of Abraham, and of course the most famous attribute of all, Abraham's attribute of chesed. As it says in Micha, 
תיתן אמת ליעקב, חסד לאברהם, כאשר נשבעת לאבותינו כי מקדם. That HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave the truth, the Torah to Yaakov, and the, and the attribute of Chesed to Avraham. And by the way, it's good, we're going to be living with Avraham the next few weeks, but soon we're going to be not only living with Avraham, we'll also be living with Yitzhak, and we'll also be living with Yaakov. Sefer Bereshit is famously known as Sefer HaAvot. It's the book of the patriarchs. Also, it's a book that's famously known to be Maase Avot Siman Lebanim. Maase Avot Siman Lebanim. The actions of the patriarchs are a GPS or a navigation for the children to come. In other words, whatever, whatever we're going to be learning in the next few weeks in Sefer Bereshit, it's not for us to, to read stories about Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, but rather it's Maase Avot, pay attention to their actions, because that is our lesson for ourselves today. We have to live with the patriarchs. They're teaching us. Every year they come, they look back around to give us another life lesson, another way to cope with life. And as a matter of fact, we know that who tries to trip us up every single day in our lives? Who's our adversary? The Samich Mem. And the Samich Mem is the name of the angel. If you spell out his name, Samich Mem and Aleph Lamed, that's his name. And that's the Rashi Tevot of Maase Avot Siman Lebanim. Maase Avot Siman Lebanim, Rashi Tevot, the name of that angel. Why? Because in order to defeat him, you need to know the ways of the patriarchs. In order to defeat him, you have to do it. Maase is Mem, Avot Aleph, Siman Samech, Lebanim Lamed. It's not in the same order, but the letters are there. For those of you that are scratching your head. But nevertheless, we see that if you want to defeat the evil inclination, if you want to defeat the Yetzhara, only if you learn the ways of the patriarchs. So what do we have over here? We're instructed to live with the Parsha. We're instructed to live with Abraham. We're instructed to pick up the attribute of chesed. We're, at, we're, 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 we're instructed to pay attention to Maase Avot, Siman Lebanim. The entire book is just learning the ways of our forefathers. And it's, all of it serves as a GPS to navigate our lives and as an antidote to the Samich Mem, an antidote to, uh, to our adversary. Bereshit Abbas says, that in the merit of Abraham, the world was created. As it says in Sefer Bereshit, Ele tolot hashamayim vaha'aret behibare'am. This is the, the history of the world. When the, Hashem created the heavens of the, and the earth, if you look in the Torah, the hay is enlarged. The hay is big. And Chazat tell us, why is the hay big? He says, because spells out the word Avraham. That the whole world was, was created in the merit of Avraham Avinu. So Chazal tell us that in the merit of Abraham Avinu, the entire world was created and everything that's in it. And why? What's so special about Abraham? Why, why was Abraham specifically chosen? Because Abraham had a special attribute, which is the attribute of Chesed. Loving kindness, benevolence. Because the whole world was created because of the attribute of chesed. As it says in Tehillim, The whole world was created 
because the attribute of loving kindness was is, is part of our uh, reality. The world was going to be built out. The world is going to be erected. The world is going to stand on the attribute of Chesed. And from this attribute of Chesed, so now that we have the core foundation of Midat HaChesed, the core foundation of this attribute of loving kindness, of the way that Hashem runs the world with Chesed, from there stemmed additional pathways of Chesed. One of them is called Ayn Tova. Ayn Tova is when you have a positive outlook. When you look at the world in a positive way, not a negative way. They see all good. Avraham Avinu bid bechol adam ba'olam ba'ayin tova. And that's one of the beautiful things that Avraham Avinu was, uh, was uh, famously known for, is he judged every person favorably. He saw everybody in a positive outlook, in a positive way. In an ayin tova. Kishket. And it tells you why. What, what is it about Abraham that he saw only goodness in people when he met them? Shepagash Adam ra'ah betochon nitzotz elokish shemechayoto, because he took the Chabad approach. What is it when he sees a person? What does he see? He says that he sees the Jewish spark. He sees the, the the godly spark in him. He doesn't see the gashmiut. He doesn't see the the person. He doesn't see whether he's a sinner. Or, or, or a bad guy, or a good guy, whatever it is, he just knows that beneath the, 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 the suit called the human body, there is a godly spark, and that's what he was concerned with, connecting to the godly spark. Avraham Avinu Tamid Zachar, because Avraham Avinu always remembered, again, we're going to quote some Pesukim from Sefer Bereshit, Ki betselem elokim asayta adam. The Hashem created man in the image of God. That means every time he saw a person, he saw a godly spark, an image of God. And that's why he was always having an ayin tova towards that individual. Because every single individual in the world was created in the image of God, then he was likened, he's, he, he, is, he is favored. And where do we know that from? Masechet Avot, Pirkei Avot. On the third chapter, on the fourteenth Mishnah, it says, "Chaviv Adam shenivra betzelem." The human being is favored because he was created in the image of God, and because of that, yesh chabel otok raui. Since every single human being was created in the image of God, every single human being needs to be respected. That was Abraham's approach. Lachen, Abraham Avinu Ahav Kol Adam Sheba Olam. Abraham Avinu loved every single person that he met. And he felt obligated to help every single person, both in the physical and the spiritual. Just the fact that the person that's in front of him is a creation of God that has a godly spark within him, he felt that he had an obligation to help him, both in the physical and the spiritual. In the physical, in the Gashmium. In the Gashmiut, patach eto alo, vekibel betocho kol adam, iye asher iye, besimcha ba opanim. We know so in the Gashmiut, what was his approach? His tent was open from all four sides. Any person can come in and is welcome into his tent. Welcome to eat, to sleep. As we know that he opened up an eshel. What's an eshel? Achila, shtiya, lina. It's the first Airbnb. You can eat there. You can drink there, and you can sleep there, for free. Chinam and kesef, and spiritually, the beruchaniut. Abraham Avinu da'ag natzel kol mivgash shelo im kol adam ba'olam kedelam meotu al boray olam anigo. Every time he had a chance to speak to somebody, he would bring up the conversation of the Creator. By any chance, are you an idol worshipper? Do you have you met the Creator? Are you uh, are you lost? <laughs> Abraham Avinu would just start talking to them. You'd start to feel out where their spiritual level is, and we'd start to teach them. 
והיה להאמין, בלבד שיש לעבוד, ולא הניח לו עד שצריך לקיים אותו אל תחת כפי השכינה. And he wouldn't leave them until he was successful to bring them under the wings of God, uh, under the wings of the שכינה. So we see Abraham Avinu is a very special human being. The whole world was created because of him. Because the whole world can only exist if we have chesed as the foundational uh, attribute that we, uh, that, we, uh, that we interact from. Avraham Avinu was the epitome, the paradigm of Ish Chesed. And, and once you're in Ish Chesed, there are different branches that come out of it. One of the branches was Ayn Tova, the Ayn Tova, the positive outlook of being able to see every single person as a godly spark and to respect them and to help them in any way that he can, both physical and spiritual. Physical, Eshel, Ocha Shina, Shtia, Lina. Physical? לא, אוכל, שתייה, לינה, לינה זה שינה. And then we have the spiritual side where he will introduce them to the Creator because we know, as Masechet Avot also says, that for 10 generations it was a downhill uh, uh, situation from Adam to Noah and only once Abraham came into... Uh, came into the picture is he's the one the first one to go out there and to start promoting the 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 whole ideology of one god one creator no avodazara and to be the one that's going to, goes out there into the masses to not only for himself that he knows it but to let others know about it as well that is Abraham Avinu I saw something that's very interesting about the pasuk that we just read. Remember, we said, Bereshit bara elokim et hashamayim et haaretz. Last week, we said Bereshit. Why does Hashem create the world? The answer is in the first word, Bereshit. Bet Reshit. Because of the two heads, two main things that the creation is going to serve. Bet Rashid, Torah Israel. That the world was created for the Torah, and the world was created for the Jewish people that's going to learn the Torah, keep the Torah. And by the Jews connecting to the Torah, that will help them connect to God, and will help them cling to God, and then we'll be able to, to perform what the Zohar says, that Hashem, the Jewish people and the Torah are one. This is also hinted in the word Bihibaream. I got a nice book last week, Mafteh La Torah, and I found something very nice over there. It says about the letter A. Hey, like we said, if you look in the Torah, the letter He is enlarged over there. And it represents when if you take the word behi baram you could also say hey baram meaning el tolgot shamayim va'aretz hey baram so we'll get a little kabbalistic on you guys right now well, i don't know what this means but i'll just say it the gemara says that the world was created with the letter hey and the heavens were created with the letter yud what does that mean i don't know ask your local kabbalists they'll tell you what it is but we have that hinted here as well. So the hey, Bera'am, the letter hey, created the, the, the world. It says over here something incredible. It says that hey is the only letter that is pronounced that comes out from our mouth in a pure form. There's no teeth, no tongue, no lips. Nothing is needed for it to, uh, for it to be uh, uttered. It can come deep from inside our lungs. Like, hey. We know that how did Hashem create the human being? Vaifach b'fiv. Right? He says that Hashem blew air. <laughs> so he says, so be, <laughs> with, the, <laughs> with the breath, He created man. But then, he says something incredible. He says... 
why is it that the letter was added to Avram? You know, later on, Avraham, Avram becomes Avraham. It's, it says, he says, it was a message to Avram and his children to bring out the hay, to bring out the Kedusha. Hashem put the hay in you, the, the, the breath, go in, Avraham, go take out that Kedusha that Hashem put inside of you to the rest of the uh, to the rest of creation. I thought that was very nice. I also saw somewhere else, I don't know if I'm going to have a chance. I'll say it right here. The letter Hey, if you take the letter Hey and deconstruct it, you can make three Vavim, three Vavs, three lines. The top line is one line, the side line is one line, and the small line is another line. If you take them, you have three lines. What? Kudusha Berichu, Oraita, Visael, Chado. That what I behave, Beraam. Why did Hashem create the world? Because of the three lines. The three. Uh, three reasons that the world was created for Kudusha uh, Yisrael Ve'oraita Chadhu. Now, up until here, we have a nice broad stroke understanding of why Avraham was chosen. Isha Chesed, Ozer Lekol Adam, he opened up an Airbnb. Ah, this guy is great. We can use more Avrahams in the world. However, The fact that Abraham fits the role of Av Uma, one of the first patriarch, Rishon Laavod, is Isha Chesed, which is great. But we're going to be living with Abraham. Remember, we said we're going to be living with Abraham. We're going to be learning the parsha, and we're going to learn Abraham Avinu, and we're going to learn his ways. So you're going to tell me, okay, great, I learned it. He's a great guy. He's chesed. I'm going to open up my house on Shabbat. Anybody can come eat, uh, uh, eat, drink, and sleep. And I'm like, Abraham Avinu. Man, we can close the books and go. That's a good lesson. But there's so much more. Maase avot siman lebanim. There's many, many things that the Torah reveals to us about the patriarchs. And notice, they don't tell us about their, when they went on vacation. And they don't let us know when they were, uh, you know, when they went to, uh, to the beach or when they took a day off. We don't have those stories. We don't have any of those stories about Abraham, Yitzchak, Yaakov. All we have in, the, in, in Sefer Bereshit, problem after problem. Challenge after challenge. Drama after drama. So many different things that are just happening. And we're like witnessing how the patriarchs get out of it. They keep getting into a situation, into a danger, into a mess, and how they get out of it. Why didn't the Torah re report to us about how they were all sitting around the table and having Shabbat dinners? How come that's not included in the Torah? How come it doesn't let us know when they went to the park and Avram kicked the ball to Yitzhak? How come we don't have those stories? Why is it that we only have the story of, of Abraham tying up his son to slaughter him? Why do we have only the story of, uh, of uh, uh, Abraham's wife getting kidnapped twice? Why is it that all the rough stories made it to the book and everything else was left out? Surely we could have painted a much, uh, uh, you know, politically correct or, P, uh, or, or, or a beautiful picture of the lives of the patriarchs as opposed to all these gory stories that we're going to be hearing in the next few weeks. However, the reason why the Torah is structured like that, and why all these stories are, not these stories, all these happenings are, 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 are by design put into Sefer Bereshit, is because it's up to us to see how the patriarchs navigated their life. We'll see how they use their character and their lofty attributes to navigate their life and give us the life tools for us to be successful. As a matter of fact, I want to crystallize this point through Abraham. Abraham Avinu was famously known to be tested 10 times. 10 times. He was thrown into the fire by Nimrod. When he was, uh, when he was uh, 
<clears throat> when he rejected him as a god, he was thrown to the fire by Nimrod. That's one of his ten trials. Parashat uh, Lech Lecha, him leaving the comforts of his home, of his family, that was one of his trials. Uh, he had the trial of famine when he was promised riches. Imagine uh, looking for food when you promise the whole land that's in front of you. He, had, he experienced a kidnapping of his wife. He experienced the First World War. He was challenged with his children being enslaved and tested in the future in Mitzrayim. He had to have, he had to go through a circumcision at a very late age, at the age of 99. His wife Sarah got kidnapped twice. He had marital issues between his wife Sarah, Hagar, and Ishmael. And of course, the, the famous trial of Akedat Yitzchak when he was uh, instructed by Kadosh Baruch Hu to take his only son from Sarah Yitzchak and put him on the altar. Why all these tests? Why all these tests? To see if Abraham is for real? The first one was enough. If you want to see if Abraham has Mesirud Nefesh, self-sacrifice, he'll do anything for you, Hashem. The first one was enough. Ur Kasdim. Getting thrown into the fire is enough. He's willing to die for you, Hashem. For what ten more? For what all the rest of the tests? He already showed self-sacrifice. He already showed Mesirut Nefesh. He already proved it. And not only that, he's the one, he's the only one that discovered Hashem and wants to promote Hashem. Why would you want him to go into the fire? So why all these tests? Ur Kazdim should have been enough. As we say every day in Tefillah, you know, I, I love to tie Tefillah into our learning, every day before we say Shirat Ayam, what do we say? Atahu Adonai HaElohim, Asher Bacharta BeAvram, VeHotzeto Meur Kasdim, VeSamta Shemo Avraham. There it is. Every day we talk about it. Every day we mention it. Every day we talk about the the fact that there was a gentleman called Avram, that he went into the burning furnace. And because he was able to withstand that burning, uh, that, that test, you took him out and you gave him a, hey, with Samta Shemo Avraham, you uplifted him, you, 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 you upgraded him. Umatsata et levavo neema lefanecha. And you saw that his heart is trustworthy, is, is, uh, is faithful to you. Vecharotimo e haberit. And you did with him the brit ben abetarim. That you, 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 you had the, 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 the covenant with him. And he said you were going to give him the land of the seven nations, which is the land of Israel. And you were, you, you were able to make the words that you, uh, you, keep, you, keep, you were able to keep your word. You're, you're a tzaddik. You keep your word. So we see that Abraham Avinu Ur Kasdim was enough for what the ten trials. Why all these tests? The answer? Ma'aseh avot siman lebanim. All the tests were for you. You needed Abraham tests. Abraham didn't need the test. Ur Kazdim was enough. But you are not going to have all the life tools that you need, all the master keys to winning your life, if Hashem doesn't put Abraham through 10 tests, and you can learn from it. Abraham did not need to get tested. Abraham got tested for you, for us, for us to learn. As a matter of fact, I'll run it back. I'll run it back. We said... Getting thrown into the furnace, Ur Kasdim. Why would have to do that? That's to show you Emunah. That's the test of Emunah. Do you believe in God so much to get thrown into the fire that Hashem is going to save you? That was the test of Emunah. What about the test of Lech Lecha? Leaving the land, Lech Lecha Ma'ar Ah, that's the test of Galut. Abraham did it to go through exile to show you how to behave when you're in exile. You're going to be in exile. 
And the way that Abraham behaved in exile is the way that you need to behave during exile. Vayirav. What was the reason why there was famine? To show you how to deal when you don't have money. Nisayon HaParnasa. Abraham Avinu showed you what it's like to live when there's no money. How to have faith and trust in the Kadosh Baruch Hu when there is no money. How about when Sarah got uh, kidnapped by Paro? Lekichat Sarah le Paro. What's the, what's the test over there? What is Abraham going through in order for me to learn? Shiduchim. The Nisayon of Shiduchim. The test of the Shiduchim. The reason why Abraham had to go through that is in order to teach us how to go through the trials and tribulations of finding a soulmate or dealing with a soulmate. How about the First World War? As this week's parasha, that we see all the four kings and the five kings getting together. Why did Abraham Avinu have to get involved in it? What is it? Not only that, it's four kings versus five kings. What is Abraham getting involved? For what does he need to go over there? He says, Milchemet Achaim, to show us that the, the life, it's going to be about war. There's going to be war. You have to fight for your life, to be successful in life. We had also Brit Ben Abetarim. He says, Brit Ben Abetarim, you know that's the covenant where Kadosh Baruch Hu tells him that your children are going to be slaves. They're going to be slaves in a foreign land. What is that? Why does Abraham have to go through that? Because the trials of tribulations of child raising. If you want to show you what it's like to feel when your children are going to suffer. How about the, the Nisayon of the Brit Mila? Why does Abraham Avinu have to go through a circumcision at the age of 99? To show you that there's a Nisayon of Yisurei HaGuf. There's going to be trials and tribulations of physical torment. With the body, with ailments, sicknesses, surgeries. How do you go through it? Later on, Sarah gets kidnapped by Avimelech. What do we learn from there? What's the lesson over there? Nisayon Shlom Bayit. You're going to know there's trials and tribulations in, in marital bliss. How about the test of having to get rid of Hagar and Ishmael? Girush Hagar and Ishmael. What's the lesson there? Nisayon Tzar Gidul Banim. The torment that comes with raising children. The difficulties with raising children. And the last one, Akedat Yitzchak. For what do we need the Nisayon of Akedat Yitzchak? Nisayon Kiddush Hashem Bechaim Ubamavet. To, or in order to sanctify the name of God, both in life and in death. Abraham did not need any of these trials, but his children needed the lessons, needed the master keys of all those situations in the future in their lives. So let's go back to the beginning of the class. Chayav adam lichyot imazman. You have to live with the times. You have to live with parashat shavua. Why? And we said that, you ha and when we have to, and when we're introduced to a, a, a time period where Abraham is part of Parashat HaShavua, O Yitzchak, O Yaakov, what does it mean? Tune in. Life class is on. Abraham is going to give you life lessons. Yitzchak is going to give you life lessons. Yaakov is going to give you life lessons. He's going to teach you how to withstand the trials of Parnassah, the trials of exile, the trials of, uh, of Emunah, the trials of Shiduchim, of, of, of afflictions of the body, of ha how to deal with children, how to deal with wars. All these lessons are for us. So it's interesting because the Avot, we draw from the Torah. We draw, we have a book. We have the instruction manual. We look at Parashat Bereshit and we get our life tools. Where did Avraham, Yitzhak and Yaakov get their life tools from? There's no Torah. How did they get? How did they, how did they know to make the right decisions? The Avod did not have the Torah. Everything was self-discovery. Eventually, with God's help later on, there was a, you know, Hashem revealed Himself and they had conversations. But nevertheless, for a large portion of their life, it was a lot of self-discovery. So how can we learn from them 
if their way was not learned from the Torah. A lot of what we see came from their self-discovery. Not from Torah instruction. So the Rambam crystallizes the question. And he says something incredible. He says... In Edchot Talmud Torah, the Rambam says, "En lecha mitzvah bekol mitzvot kulan shei shekula keneged Talmud Torah, ella Talmud Torah keneged kol mitzvot kulan shat Talmud mevil ede maase." Leficha ha Talmud kodel maase bechol makom. He says, "There's no greater, uh, there's no greater mitzvah like learning Torah, because learning Torah is keneged all six thirteen." So right now, we're learning Torah. It's as if we're performing all 613 in one shot. He says, why? When you learn, it brings you to action. When the time is to act, you know what's the right way to act. Why? You learned what's the right way to do. So we see that regardless, any way you go, you, you go about it, that you always have to learn Torah first in order to know what to do I had to act later. He says, Something amazing and wondrous. When the Torah talks about the patriarchs, the holy patriarchs, we don't, say not, we don't see nothing about learning Torah. Nothing is mentioned about the Limut Torah of Shela Avot. The only thing that the Torah talks about, doesn't talk about the Torah learning, and we're learning from them because they learned Torah, and they, 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 they made Torah decisions, and we're learning Torah decisions because they learned Torah decisions, and we're emulating them. No, no, that's not the pathway. That's not the way. The way that it went is the Hanisyon Nod Vamavakim. Their trials and their, uh, and their, uh, and their, um, uh, Mavakim is, uh, Struggles, thank you, that's the word. So their, their, their trials and their struggles, through their trials and their struggles, is how we learn to emulate them. So he says, so it's a very strong question. So he says, uh, I have two answers, I'm going to just use uh, uh, one for the moment. He says, Chovata Yehudi hu lo lilmod. He says, Chovata Yehudi lo lilmod tiyaduto. Unbelievable, unbelievable how it ties to the Baal Atanya. He says, the obligation of the Jew is not to learn his Judaism, but rather to live out his Judaism. Don't be a walking library. Learn and know what to do. Live out your Judaism. The learning brings you to uh, act. He says, that's why the Torah, when it comes to the patriarchs, it tells us all their actions, everything that they did. Why? Because they lived out Judaism. They didn't read the books, and because they were great Torah retainers, they, they could retain a lot of information, is why we look up to them. We look up to them because they lived out the Torah life. They lived out the Torah life. Now that strengthens our first line of the class of Sheikh. Why does it say you have to live with the parasha? Because it's not about reading the Pesukim and, and regurgitating the Rashi. It's about learning the Pasuk and living out the Pasuk. You learned on Vafta Chakamocha, go live it. You learned about kosher food, go live it. You learned about Lashon uh, Hara, go live it. Everything that you learn, Piriya Veriviya, go live it. Brit uh, Milah, uh, 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 go live it. All the things that are mentioned in the Torah, go, go out and live it. Don't just read it. Don't just be a, a you know, a, a mule with sacks of books on your back. Don't be a walking library. Go live out the Torah. I saw something. I don't know if everybody, anybody's, everybody's going to get this, but I'll mention it. But it's brought from uh, in Masechet Yoma on the twenty-eighth page on the second side. That says, 
that it goes against what I just said, everything that I said. So I'm going to go against everything I just said. Masechet Yomah says something incredible. It says, Avraham Avinu Zaken V'yoshe B'Yishiva. It says, Avraham actually did go to Yeshiva and learn. But Yaakov, it says he was learning for 14 years. Shem Ever. Yes. But look, but look what it says over here. But, but not Torah. They learned uh, Yiddishkeit, you could say. But not the Torah. Yitzchak Avinu Zaken V'yoshe B'Yishiva. Yaakov Avinu Zaken V'yoshe B'Yishiva. Avraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov did sit in Yeshiva and did learn. And they, they fulfilled the entire Torah. He says, Avraham Avinu, Kilyotav Limduhu Kola Torah. His kidneys taught him. What does that mean? I can just tell you in a broad stroke, every body part has a certain spiritual function. The Kal uh, Atzmotai Tomarna, I didn't prepare the Pesukim for it, but there's a lot, a lot of body parts that have to do with like the liver, like the heart, like the kidneys. Uh, that had like the 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 the, uh, the mara, what's the mara? What's it, what's it called? The appendix. All these different places that the of the body that spirituality stems from them. Anybody who learns Rabbi Nachman from Breslov has a whole tour over there about body parts and their functions in spirituality. But it said that over here. But nevertheless, the takeaway that we have right here is you have to live out the Torah life, not just learn it. Okay, now. Let's go deeper. Let's start understanding what life is about. Is anybody hot or everybody's okay? Hot? What do you say? We could go back and forth a little bit? Yeah? Women, what are you going to do? It's a hot flash. It's a hot flash. Give him some air and then we cut it again. 74? Is it on? Okay, it's on 74. Thank you. Okay. This is where it's time to start to press record. Kol inyane ha'olam ben tov le ben ra hem nisyonot le adam. We're now learning. What we learned in the previous class, what is the essence of life? What is life about? What is the purpose of living? This is the add-on. This is almost like, let, just pick up where the last class left off and copy-paste right here, put them together. All the happenings of the world, any way you register it, whether it's good or bad, everything is a test. Everything is a, is a trial. Ki ikar metziut ha'adam ba'olam hazeh hu'rak lekiyu mitzvot v'lavor v'lamod benisayon. The main purpose of a person in this world is to perform mitzvot and to pass the test. Perform mitzvot and to pass the test. You are constantly going to get tested. In other words, if you're still waking up in the morning and saying, why is this happening to me? If you're still waking up in the morning and saying, oh, I can't believe what's going on today, then you, you, you don't know what life is about. If you don't know that you're going to get tested every single day, then you don't know what life is about. Life is all about tests. Hashem is going to test you every single day. Some tests are going to be easy. Some tests are going to be hard. But none of them are going to be tests that you can't pass, that you can't endure. The essence of a person's reality in this world To perform the mitzvot which gives you the tools of how to manage life and to withstand the test. And that's why all Sefer Bereshit is just the patriarchs and their tests. To show us that the essence of life is being tested. Furthermore, in the book Mesilat Yesharim, it says, "Adam lo nivra el alit aneg al Hashem ve'leenot miziv shchinato." The finish line to life, 
the finish line. The finish line to this entire existence. Once we are born, come into this planet, learn, get married, have children, learn Torah, teach Torah, live a, a Torah lifestyle, uh, withstand all the tests that we're giving, all the trials and the tribulations that we're able, we need to withstand, whether they're good or bad, easy or hard. But the finish line is, It's only to bring you to the ultimate purpose of basking in the glory of God and to enjoy His, his uh, to bask in, his, uh, in God's holy presence. And that's the real, real pleasure of this world. He says, but you should know that this type of reward, this type of finish line, can't be experienced in this world. It can only be experienced in Olam Abba. Anytime I hear Olam Abba, I'm like, well, who says I'm going to make it there? Who says I'm going to make it to Olam Abba? I'm going to do all this work from maybe getting into the Olam Abba. I want something here. I want something in this one, Olam Azeh. So he says, Achadech kedel agia laolam Abba. So if you want to experience as titanag al Hashem in this world, is by performing mitzvot. You're going to get that feeling of olam haba in this world. And last week's class, we said also as as titanag. We said Torah learning, just like Mesilat Yisraelim is saying also, but they also gave us another one, Shabbat. Shabbat is main olam haba. One sixtieth of olam haba is Shabbat. So this whole as titanag el Hashem, the whole uh, ultimate goal is litanag el Hashem v'lenot miziv shchinato, that can only be experienced in olam haba. But olam haba is later, is far away. I don't know if I can make it. Is there a plan B of how I can experience that in this world? Yes, performing the mitzvot is going to let you feel like olam haba in this world. Keeping Shabbat is me'en olam haba. It's like, keep, it's like feeling Shabbat, feeling olam haba in this world. We saw that Avraham Avinu had 10 tests. Everybody wants to say, everybody has an opinion on which one was the toughest one. Out of all the 10, which one was the, huh? Akedat Yitzchak. Well, everybody's saying Akedat Yitzchak, you sure? So, okay, Akedat Yitzchak, I heard a Brit Milah, maybe Lech Lecha, imagine just opening that door and walking, that's pretty tough. Not knowing where you're going. It uh, takes a lot of uh, courage to do that. But we know that last week we said that the whole world was created for the Jewish people and for the Torah. And the Torah's number one mitzvah was what? Piriyah Verivya. And today we learned to procreate. Today we learned that the whole world got created for Avraham. Can we merge the two? I want to merge last week's learning and this week's learning and for it to make sense. Last week we said, and when it comes to Piriyah Berivya, I'll just refresh our memory. That the first mitzvah of all 613 is what? Piriyah Berivya. Number one mitzvah in the Torah is to procreate. Pru'urvu. Uh, you know, a lot of opinions of what pru'urvu mean. Pru'urvu, some say uh, to procreate, meaning to have a boy. And then, urvu is to have another child. And the best thing is to have a boy and a girl, right? There's the opinions if you have two boys, if you have two girls, a boy and a girl. There's even an opinion that it really doesn't count. Piyaverivya doesn't count until your children have Piyaverivya. Meaning you have to have a boy and a girl, and your children have to be a boy and a girl. Uh, by all opinions, you're Yotze. But we heard, we saw a beautiful uh, explanation over here from Rav Yora Michael Abergel, Zechet Sadik Livrecha in his book, Ibre Noam, that he brings Unkelus over here. 
and he also brings the Masechet Kiddushin. It says, Pru Vu. Pru, that's Yeladim. Toldu Yeladim Larov. Urbu, he says, Urbu, if you go to uh, Masechet Kiddushin, Omenet HaMegadelet Etayelet, the lady that brings up the child, the, that raises the child, is called Marbinta. Marbinta comes from the word Urbu, meaning it has the same shorish of like Rav, like Rabbi. So he says, Puru Urbu. Puru is for procreating, for having children. Urbu is to teach them. Puru Urbu is not just to procreate. It's to have children and to teach them. To have children and to teach them Torah. That's what the world was created for. Hashem created the whole world, and the number one mitzvah is to procreate. So what, to have children just to have children? No, have children and teach them. Last week's class, we talked about the Shla Kadosh, what it says over there, about the uh, Dardarim V'Kotzim. Look into it. I want to go in a different direction today. Comes Abraham Avinu, and he's the classic example of Purvu. Why? Because not only does he have children, but Abraham Avinu takes upon himself that all God's children are his children, and he starts to teach them. Abraham teaches all the people, all mankind, about the Kadosh Baruch Hu, the essence of every Jew. The whole world got created, so, so a person can get married, have children, and teach his children about the way of God. Abraham Avinu takes it upon himself, not only his children, but the whole world. After all the ten trials, after all the ten trials that Avraham Avinu goes through, not one time does Hashem say, because of this one, this one, this one, because of Lech Lecha, I'm going to bless you. Uh, because of, uh, because of Akedat Yitzhak, I'm going to give you the land. Uh, because of uh, uh, the, the fight of the four kings and the five kings, because of this, Never does it say on all of uh, on any of the trials and tribulations that he was going through, any of the tests that he was going through, that because of this Hashem chose Abraham to be Abraham the patriarch. You know why Hakadosh Baruch Hu chose Abraham out of all of the people on the planet, and after all the ten trials, not because of the ten trials at all. It says in Bereshit on the eighteenth chapter, Perek uh, Yud on the eighteenth and nineteenth pasuks. It says, Avraham, Avraham is going to become, a big nation is going to come from him. He's going to be huge. He's going to be in, in, uh, uh, a, a, a large amount of the people of the world are going to come, are going to be the progeny of Avraham Avinu. And all the land, the people of the world are going to have an, a, a progeny that is blessed from him. Why? Why does Abraham get this blessing that so many people from the world are going to come from his genealogy? He says, you know why Abraham was chosen? Why Abraham was the, 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 the uh, Av Ha'umot? He's the first patriarch? Because as Shem says, I know, Ki Dativ, I know him. He's going to command, he's going to teach his daughters and his sons to continue in the ways of Hashem after he's gone. And what are they going to do, his children? They're going to keep the way of God. And what are they going to do? They're going to give charity and they're going to be ju- and they're going to pursue justice. The pasuk says ki yedativ. The word yedativ is a, is a, is a word that expresses um, enamor, liking, love. Vadam yada et chava. What's vadam yada et chava? And Abraham knew Chava. What's new? Got intimate. He knew her. So he says, when it says over here, Ki Yedativ, he says, 
the word Yedatib that I know Avraham, it's Lashon Chiba. Why is it Lashon Chiba? Because he's going to teach his family, he's going to teach his children. From here we learn how lofty is the concept of teaching your children the way of God. HaKadosh Baruch Hu chose Abraham out of all the people in the world, that all these people are going to come from him. And not only that, that the Jewish nation is going to start from him because of the 10 tests, maybe. Because he's going to teach his children? Absolutely. The ten tests were for us. Those were just lessons for us to learn. But Abraham was chosen because he had the quality of teaching his children the ways of God. And what did we say in the beginning of the class? That even any child of God, all of God's children, all the ones that are off the deck, he would teach them as well. That's why he was chosen. Abraham is a very special individual because in this week's parasha we have Brit ben Abetarim. When Abraham finally gets to the point where Hashem blesses him and he tells him that I'm going to make you into a great nation and he starts to tell him how his children are going to be enslaved in Egypt for 400 years. But later on he's going to give them the land of Israel. Something incredible Abraham Avinu says it says in Brit Ben Abetarim he says in Brit Ben Abetarim Hashem promised Abraham two things Banim and Eret Yisrael he promised him children and he promised him the land of Israel Abraham asks him after Hashem promises him that he'll have children and that he'll ha get the land of Israel Abraham has a very weird response to that, uh, to that gift that Hashem gave him. Imagine Hashem says, I'm going to bless you with children and I'll give you the land of Israel. Say thank you and continue with life. What does Abraham Avinu say? Bema eda ki arishena. Abraham asks, how do I know that I'm going to inherit? How do I know that I'm going to get the land? Let me ask you a question. Was that extra? Did Abraham have to ask that question? Could he have just said, thank you Hashem, and move on? And he got punished for that. Nevertheless, let's go a little bit deeper to why he's asking that. Bema edak yarishena. Rashi says, Amar lefanav hodiyeni be'ezis chut kaimuba. He says, no, no, no. Rashi explains to us. He wants to say, how do I know in what merit will my children get the schut to live in Israel? He says, reveal to me. You tell me I'm going to have children. I believe you. And you say that my children are going to inherit the land of Israel. I believe you. But in what merit are they going to inherit the land of Israel? What's their merit? Why would Abraham ask that question? Because HaKadosh Baruch Hu used a special word. He says that he'll give you the land, Lerishta, that he'll give it the land as an inheritance. So Abraham is asking, you're giving it to me inheritance. Bema'eda, bema'eda kirishena, be'ez zechut. In which merit am I going to inherit the land of Israel? That my children are going to in, uh, inherit the land of Israel. So the Maharal brings something un. Believable, and this is going to crystallize our lives and where we are today and why we are where we are. And you start to connect the dots. I always say any lesson that helps you connect the dots is something that uh, gives you a lot of clarity. It's like you maybe you lived clouded and you don't know what things are going on. You press a little bit on the shutter and everything comes into focus. This is one of those lessons. The Maharaj says. Abraham Avinu says, my children are going to inherit the land of Israel? He says, why? 
the land of Israel is Hefker. Anybody can come and take the land of Israel. He says, Ratsashi Amlu Alabi Skuba Kadin. He says, I want my kids to earn it. As a father, I know exactly what Abraham is going for. It's like, you know, your children are going to get, I don't know, I can't say, okay, let's go with teenagers. Does any teenager deserve a brand new 2025 BMW 745 just like that? Wow, popular opinion, no. Right? Abraham says also, my kids are just going to inherit the land of Israel just like that? In order to get a brand new 745 BMW at 16 years old, what do you have to do? You have to earn it. Give me a reason that you get such a fancy uh, gift. Abraham Avinu says the exact same thing. What's the zechud that they're going to merit the land of Israel? Is the land of Israel hefker? Anybody can just go and take it? Huh? We'll get to that. We'll get to that. I don't know if we're going to... Well, actually, I don't know if we're going to get to that. I, it, it's a different mahalach over here. Ratzashi amlu ala beiskubah kadin. Avram says, I want him to earn it. He says, just like I earned my position of Avraham Avinu. How did I get here? Look at the 10 trials that I got to before you told me that I can get children and land. They're just going to get children and land just like that? No 10 trials and tribulation, no 10 tests? Card blanche to just get the land of Israel, they should earn it. He says, Abraham Avinu, just like he toiled and worked and, and, and passed all those tests and became Abraham Avinu, and he earned it. They also have to go on the same path, become their own Avraham Avinu, and they'll earn it. Not just to get it for, for free. Not only that, he says, and to get to this level of Avraham Avinu, now that we know a little bit about his life, the level of Avraham Avinu, what are they going to have to do? They're going to have to go through all these struggles, both spiritual and physical, until they get to the level of Avraham Avinu. However, if they're not going to be like Avraham Avinu, and they're not going to go through these physical tests and spiritual tests and pass them, so how are they going to earn the land? If you're going to be like me, then you're going to get the gift that Avraham got. Avraham got children, and Avraham got the land. Be like me, you get the land of Israel and you get the children. You don't go to the spiritual level of Abraham Avinu. You don't go in the way. You don't do ma'aseh avot siman lebanim. Then you know what you need to do? Plan B. What's plan B? You're going to get to that spiritual pathway through a different way. Three, through, through three exiles. Living like Abraham Avinu has a bonus. Has children and the land of Israel. Not living like Avraham Avinu has a plan B. Three exiles. Continues to say, שאברהם אבינו התנסה בעשרה ניסיונות, שכל אחד קשה מחברו, עד שזכה להיות אברהם אבינו. And the ten tests that Abraham Avinu went through, they're going to experience in exile. And once they go through those ten experiences in exile, then they'll be able to go to the title of Abraham Avinu. Why do we have such a hard life? Why do we get tested every day? It's by design. But Avraham Avinu, he's the original. He's the one that was the true example of the first Jew. And we're all supposed to go bedarko, in the ways of, as it says, et anar lefi darko. There's a famous pasuk that says, educate the child in his way. Lefi darko, what's darko? Darko shel Avraham Avinu, or darko shel Kadosh Baruch Hu. 
Teach the child in the ways of Abraham. Teach the child the ways of God. But if you don't go in the ways of Abraham, and if you don't go in the ways of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, you're still going to get there. Just the road is tougher. It's going to be 10 trials, meaning if you go in the ways of Abraham, you get children, you get the land of Israel with peace. If you don't go in the ways of Abraham, you have to go to three exiles with 10 of those tests inside those exiles. The test of Parnassah, the, the test of Shlombay, the test of Gidul Yardim, uh, Betzai, the test of, uh, of, of, of all the things that we saw over there, the, of the Emunah, of the wars. And we see there's not a single person in this room that has not gone through those 10 tests in one way or another. And we do it where? In the exile. So Avraham Avinu says, I agree to this program. Why? Because we know during the time of, of, uh, of Brid ben Abitarim, he falls asleep. There's the, the bird and, the, and the, the half animals that are cut and the darkness that comes upon him, the three galuyot that it says over there, so on and so forth. And Avraham Avinu saw into the future and he says, I agree that it should be as such. That if they're not going to go in the way of Avraham Avinu, they're not going to earn their way, that they're going to have to go through exiles and ten tests in each one of those exiles. Ki yada hakol It's all going to be worth it. Avraham agreed to that program because he knew that it was all going to be worth it. Kol ha-yisurim sheba'olam kedaim kedaya lagiya lamadriga ruchanit vanitchit shel Avraham Avinu. All the trials and tribulations of the world are worth it to eventually get to the spiritual status of Abraham Avinu. Because once you get to that point, you merit to eternal life. Madriga Ruchanit Nitzchit. You get to a, a spiritual level that is eternal. Lastly, it says, now uh, lastly, we're going to, we're going to dig one, one more layer deeper, and then we'll conclude. What's the reason of these tests? It's great if you understand that it's the essence of the world, and that's why we're here, and, and it's good enough for you, and you accept it. But at one point you say, but who needs it? Why do I need to get tested? What are you bringing me into this world in order to get tested? For what? Reward. Reward. Umahi matarat hanisayon. What's the purpose of our trials? So that to what? Chazak. You guys are all saying very, very good things, and it's all true. It has three different explanations of why we need trials in our lives. Number one, why do we get tested? Reason number one, to prove to yourself and to others that you can withstand a trial. That you're able to withstand a test, a trial for the sake of heaven. So we see over here that sometimes a person has to prove to himself that he can go through it. Yes, you can say, leave me alone. I just want to be on the couch. I don't want to be bothered. What kind of a life is that going to be? What kind of a life is that going to be? If you're not being tested. What kind of a life is that going to be if you're not getting pushed to the best version of yourself? We used many examples in previous classes. I'm not going to go into it. But a life without a test is not a life. A life without an adversary is not... A life, a soccer game where you're just kicking balls into the goal without a goalie trying to stop you, without 10 other players trying to take the ball from you, is not a soccer game. Life is not life without resistance, without a fight, without trying to win your life. Hanisayon balochiach la'adam atzmo, that the trial comes to prove to you and also to prove to others that you can. Shata chazak, you're strong. Um sugal amod ben nesayon, you can withstand the test. You shouldn't uh, push away a test. 
A Nisayon, by the way, the first two letters of a Nisayon is what? Nes. Nes, in biblical terms, is to raise. Nes is miracle, but also to raise. Meaning, what is the Nisayon? The first two letters of Nisayon is Nes, to show you two things. One, this Nisayon is going to uplift you. And not only that, you think you can do it, there's a nest inside, a, a built-in miracle. Just, just do your part. Also show how much you're willing to get tested to show Hashem that you're going in His ways. Right, so, the, so exactly. So, to raise the flag. So that's where that whole thing is, that it uplifts. Just like the ness is to up, it means to uplift the flag. So does the trial is to uplift you. Chazak, we're able to withstand the test. Beautiful. And the Rambam says in Morei Nevuchim, Upaamim anisayon letoelet haroim oto. Sometimes you're going through a test. You know why? Because somebody's watching you. Hashem puts you through a test. So other people could see you going through the test. To see how you're going through the test, so they can develop their own fear of God and see an example of how somebody else passed the test. So first reason of why we get tested is to show yourself that you can get tested and you can pass. To show others that, that, that you're going through a test and you can pass. To show others that you're able to, to show yourself that you're capable of, of withstanding a test and to show Hashem that you are able to withstand the test in order to glorify or to sanctify the name of God. To do a Kiddush Hashem. And other times it's also that other people can look at you from the side and say, look, he's getting tested with his Parnassah. Look, he's getting tested with his Shalom Bayit. Look, he's getting tested with his Kiru Hiradim. I wonder what's going to be. I wonder how he's going to get out of it. I wonder what decision he's going to make. And all of a sudden, a week later, a month later, you see, the guy got out of it. Oh, what'd you do? I made a Torah decision. I, said, I did what the book said and I got out of it. I listened to the rabbi. I took a class. I, I did a She'elat Rav. Wow. See, I got, I got through it. You just uplifted yourself. Oh, I just got through it. You were able, others got uplifted because of you. And not only that, others learned from you. That's why we have tests. Huh? Ah. Number two. Hanisayon hu l'ashviyach od yoter et ha'adam b'chirat nafshit. You know why you get tested? It's for you to become better. For you to get upgraded. Lo tzi ma'koach el ha'poal et ha'potenzial. We all have potential. We all have potential. I always say, you know, in school, when I was in school, I, every single report card was the same for me. My parents would come home and they say, all oh, your teachers say the exact same thing. He has so much potential. <laughs> he has so much potential. That's what you do when you get 60s and 70s and 75s and you're eking out 80s, what is the teacher gonna say? He has so much potential. But what? He's too busy with this and the other and, the, and another thing, right? So they tell you you have so much potential. When you're in sports, when you see the, you see the guy, he has so much potential, but he's not good. Why? He has potential. He has to develop it. He has to work on it. He was, he, what they're saying over here, is the nisayon is in order to bring out your potential. Sometimes you also see kids, they learn a, a, a page of Gemara, they know nothing. And, and the parents start to, ah, maybe you should take them to a lower class, different, different school, this, that. The, 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 the teacher will come to them, he has a lot of potential. We just have to bring it out. Meaning, when a, in life, the reason why we get tested is because we have a potential to become a better version of ourselves. And the more we get tested, and the more we get, uh, the more we get tested, and the more we pass those tests, the better version of ourselves that comes out. We become a better product. Getting tested and and, and, and failing, getting tested and getting up, getting tested and then passing, and doing the combination of those things your entire life. Eventually, 
you become a much better version of yourself. They say, in Chazal, they say, what's Gehenom? Gehenom, they show you two movies. They show you the life that you lived and the life that you, would live, that you could have lived if you lived up to your potential. And that burns you to the core. I could have been that. That's the Gehenom. I could have been a contender. <laughs> they show you what would you have been if you would apply yourself to full potential. So what's the Nisayon? What does Hashem do for you? He says, you have so much potential. Let me bring it out of you. So I'm going to test you with your kid today. And with your wife tomorrow. And with your partner the next day. And with your health next year. But the way you go through it and the way you get out of it, that's going to build you up to be the best version of yourself. The Nisyonot is like a life coach or, 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 or a personal trainer at the gym. When you tell him, I can't push anymore, it's 120. We're doing 145 today. I can't. You can. Give me one. Just give me one today. Three months later, you're doing 10. Why? Because somebody's pushing you. God is pushing you all day. All day long, He's pushing you. It's challenging you to, to, to bring out your full potential. Third reason. Why do we get tested? Sometimes those hard, uncomfortable tests that we don't like. Why can't I find an apartment? Why can't I find a zivug? Why can't I... Uh, wh 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 why is it so hard to make a deal? Why can't I close a deal? Why can't I make parnasa? Why am I late on my car payment again? Why... You know those difficulties that people go through? It's kaparat avonot. Go through it. Kaparat avonot. And the more that you were able to go through this test the right way, not only do you atone for your previous sins, and you start to clear up your spiritual baggage or your spiritual debt, but if you're on a high level, you could clear up other people's debt. Lechaper al avonot hador. That imagine that all of us as a generation, all of us as a group of people, we have, our, we have our individual debt and we have our collective debt. Hashem says, listen, you're a tzaddik. Take, a, take it for the team. Take a little bit more hardship for the team. You know why? Because you are able to get it. You have emuna. You have trust. You have faith. You know the Torah. You love the Torah. The, the, the Torah is sweet for you. Jewish lifestyle is, is, is who you are. So why am I getting tested if I'm a tzaddik? If she's a tzaddikit, why? Take it for the team. There's 10 Jews completely off the deck. If you don't take it for the team, they're going to die. I'm trying to keep them alive. Take it for them. Suffer for them. Don't worry, soon there'll be a teshuvah, they'll, be, they'll, they'll, they'll come back in your merit. All of a sudden they show you the two movies. All of a sudden you see 2,865 people that came back and did teshuvah because of you. Uh, you know, you're in the heavenly court and you say, Hashem, I don't know those people. You sure this is my file? I don't know these people. He's like, you remember that year that for two years you were struggling with that ailment? Remember how, you, you remember that five years you were looking for a, you were looking for a mate? Remember those two years that you were trying to conceive? Remember that time where, you, where for a full year you couldn't make rent? Remember all that? I knew you could handle it. I knew you could handle it. But clear out their debt. And because they cleared out their debt a little bit, they were able to get more life. And the more life they had, the more Torah they can learn. The more Teshuvah they can do. And you bought them. You gave them that extra time and they were able to come back. In your merit, they're here. That's why we have trials. Lechaper avonot hador. Even though, even though, that it's nice what we just learned. These three different reasons of why we get tested. But you know, I love to tie prayer into learning. What do we say every day in Birkot Shachar? What do we say? We say, We say, Ve'al tevienu lol de nisayon, ve'lol de bizayon. Any of you, any of you do uh, Birkot Shachar? 
Okay, so in Birkot HaShachar it says... I don't know, we'll see. Okay, go ahead. Yes. After you pass the Nisayon, what? Ah, okay, nice, nice. So, so here we are every single morning in Birkot HaShachar, we say, Okay, we just learned that Nisayon is so good. We just said, it brings out my potential, it uplifts me, I help out the, I clear out my spiritual debt. So why am I saying, and don't give me a Nisayon. Uh, what's going on over here? First, we, we welcome it, then we ask not to, you know, that we don't want it. Rather, we say the Kavanah is, don't give me a test that I can't withstand. Don't give me a test that I can't pass. Right? We know that Hashem always gives us a, a, a test that we can pass. Right? Anybody play video games over here? So, no? I used to play video games. Street Fighter. Right? You know, Ryu and Ken. You know, Ryu, you could actually choose the same player. I could be the guy, and he could be the same guy. So we're the two of the same. Right? What's the difference? Who's going to win? Whoever has the better moves. Right? Mm -hmm. So who has the better moves? That's you and Yetzirah. HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, you and your evil inclination, you and your Yetzirah, same power, same strength, identical players. Who's going to win? Let's see. Let's see. You woke up motivated. You woke up connected. You were, you, you, you woke up uh, ready to make Torah decisions. You're going to make some Torah decisions today. You're going to win him. But if you're going to, you know, be weak, or maybe you weakened your neshama with some social media, some Netflix, some internet, some music from over there, and some uh, movie from over there, and your mind is all uh, bala bola, what's going to happen? You know, when the time comes, <laughs> he's got the special move. <laughs> Fireball, you're gone. So we see over here that we ask for Hashem. Don't give us a test that we can't withstand. But we know that Hashem always gives us a test that we're able to withstand. I always say after the high holiday season, it's like us going to the gym for a full month. Right? Rosh Hashanah, Seti Metshuva, Kippur, Sukkot, Rosh Hashanah Rabbah. Where do you think he was? He was also at the gym. He was also at the Yetzirah gym working out. But what happens when we come out in the, in the, in the month of Cheshvan, we're like this, uh, work, email, carpool, we go back. Meanwhile, he's so strong, boom, knockout punch, right after the holidays, and all of a sudden, half the Jewish people after the Chagim like, what happened? I was just flying for a full month. I was so close to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. I, I, I haven't felt so close to the Torah and to a Jew like the way that I feel in the month of Tisha. All of a sudden, I can't believe that's what I did. I fell for that sin. Why? He waits for you that right after the high holiday, he said, yeah, you're such a tzaddik. Let me show you what tzaddik. I've also been at the, at the gym. Boom, knocks you out. But if you know that after Tisha, what do you have to do? Mega defense. You have to play huge defense because he's looking to knock you out. He's looking to deflate you for the entire upcoming year. So you say, ah, you want my, you want my, um, um, my Cheshvan, you want my Cheshvan to be bitter. I'm sorry, I already did on the on Rosh Chodesh, I did Ram Cheshvan. I know how to uplift my Cheshvan. I'm ready for you. I'm playing defense. You're not going to put me down. Let's go. Game on. I put a quarter in the machine. In conclusion, 
חייב אדם לחיות עם הפרשה. We, we said it so many times in, in so many different classes, but I think this one, we're really feeling it, that we understand that everything, everything in, for our lives is embedded in the weekly Torah portion. And now we're living with Avraham for the next few weeks. And Avraham is going to teach us Emuna. He's going to teach us about Parnasa. He's going to teach us how to live through war. He's going to, through kidnappings. He's going to teach us how to live through famine through Parnassus struggles, through Shlombait issues, through child raising issues. He's going to teach us how, everything that we need to know from Abraham. And just when he's done, after 175 years, and by the way, you know, we're introduced to Abraham, you know, he lived many years before this week's parasha. At what age are we introduced to him? 75. 75 is the numerical value of Bitachon. He comes in at 75 to tell you, let me show you, I'm the essence of Bitachon. At 75, I come to show you that behind the scenes, everything that I'm about is trust and faith in the Kadosh Baruch Hu. And then Yitzchak comes in. And then we'll be living with Yitzchak. And then Yaakov comes in. We'll be living with Yaakov. And then the Shvatim, and then, and then Moshe. And then we walk with God because this Torah is just uh, helps us to cling to the ways of Kadosh Baruch Hu. These are all our life coaches. These are our teachers. These are our sages. These are our fathers. These are our forefathers, the patriarchs. However, the number one takeaway from Abraham Avinu, the one that solidified him as the first patriarch, is to educate our children in the way of Hashem. It's the essence of our existence. And Avraham Avinu took it even further. Anyone. All God's children. Avraham Avinu took the approach of I love all God's children. Whoever, is, whoever has a, a, a spark of a Kadosh Baruch Hu inside of him, come. You have a Tselem Elohim, come. Let me show you. You're all potential. As a matter of fact, it says over there, it called a Nefesh Asher Asa Becharan. What's all a Nefesh Asa Becharan? He used to convert. He used to convert. I saw something, Rabbi Meir Eliyahu one time said something incredible. Avraham Avinu says, I'm going to convert the whole world. That was his answer. Every person that I meet, I'm going to introduce him to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. When you convert, as soon as you get into that mikveh, what happens? The neshama gets an add-on. You know, the Jewish neshama is constructed of yachida. Naranchi. What's Naranchi? Nefesh ruach neshama, chaya yechida. A Gentile soul doesn't have all those compartments. A Gentile soul has just a nefesh. When they dip in the mikveh, they get all those parts. Where do they get all those parts from? From the soul uh, factory? Where, where do they get it from? Rav Meir Eliyahu says something incredible. Et nefesh asher asu becharan. He says that the entire time that Abraham Avinu and Sarah had relations, what happened to all those neshamot? Up until 99, uh, up, up until 90 and 100 is when they had children. What happened to all that neshamot, all that uh, zera? He says, those are all the neshamot that when the Gentiles come, what is it? Sarah bat Avraham Avinu, bat Sarah Imenu. The extra neshamot parts that they need after the conversion, Avraham was working on that also. Et nefesh asher asam becharan. So, save for the Gentiles. Yes, save for the for, for, for the for the, for the, the, the midgayrim. So we see that the number one takeaway from Abraham is to educate our children in the way of Hashem and Him, even all the children of God. Also, there's a. It's worth. It's worth hearing this. We're just talking about Gentiles. We're just talking about people that converted. There's a big question over here. Abraham Avinu had so many students. Right? While he was alive, he converted people. Where are they? Where are the group of people that were, I don't know, call them Abraham's converts? Where are they? Where's that group of people that Abraham converted? Did they turn into a, a group of people, a religion, a sect, a, a something, a, a country, people? Where are they? It says, 
when Abraham Avinu was converting people, a lot of them got closer to the Creator. As it says, Shavram Megayret Anashim, Vesara Megayret Avram Megayret Anashim, Vesara Megayret Anashim. The Avram used to convert the men, and Sarah used to convert the women. You know what's the problem with those people that Abraham converted? Even though that he converted them and he introduced them to the way of God, they lacked the Avraham Avinu gene. What's the Avraham Avinu gene? We said the Avraham Avinu, why did Hashem choose him? Because he's going to pass on the teachings to his children. All those people that they converted, they never partook on Chinuch. He, 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 he knew God and that's it. He left it alone. He didn't take it upon himself to teach the children. So that's why they fell out. They, became, they be, believed in God and then they died. They believed in God and then they died. What did Abraham do? He created the continuation. And that's why Hashem chose him over anybody else. Abraham Avinu knew education of the children is the most paramount thing in Jewish life. As it says, That's why Abraham Avinu merited to be the only one to start the Jewish religion and to have this progeny of generations after him. Because he took upon himself the lofty, uh, uh, the, the lofty job of Chinuch Yeladim Bedeir Hashem. That's the takeaway from Abraham Avinu. Above and beyond that, he can teach you 10 other things. He can teach you about Parnassah. He can teach you about wars. He can teach you about kidnapping. He can teach you about Shalom Bayit. He can teach you about many different things. But the big takeaway that Hashem says, because of this, is children's education. Tonight was about, Baruch Hashem, connecting the dots. Why was the world created? Bereshit bara elokim et hashamayim et ha'aretz. Bereshit bet reshit. La Torah, Israel. What's the first mitzvah of the Torah? Pruvu. Pruvu, procreate and rbu, teach the children. Avraham Avinu says, it says, Ele tolot hashamayim et ha'aretz. Behi baram, hi baram, oh, because of Avraham. Why would the world be created because of Avraham? Because Avraham was all about teaching the children. Start to connect the dots. This is what we're in the world for. That's why when you see a Jewish family, what's the center of the household? The kindalach. <laughs> Everything's about the kids. If we get an hour at the end of the day, wow, we won. But everything's about the children. Where they're going to eat, where they're going to sleep, where they're going to go, which school, with their friends, play date, uh, uh, where they're going to wear on Shabbat, uh, what are they learning, are they, who's their chavrutu, who they're hanging Ch- Kids, kids, kids. You go into other homes, they slap an iPad in their hand and they move on with their life. Goyish life is completely different. They put the TV to educate the children and they go on about their ways. I have my own life. Jewish life, we live for our kids. That's why they, they can never understand us when they see us. You know when you walk down the street on Shabbat and you hold your kids' hands and you're walking and you're in a suit and it's 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning and they're sitting on the porch smoking a cigarette, the husband and the wife, and they don't get it. Like, why isn't he on the porch smoking a cigarette today? What is he doing in a suit at 8 o'clock in the morning with his kids? Because it's two different worlds. We know that we were created for what? For the Torah. That we are all connected with God. The way that we get connected to, to God is by performing the mitzvah of the Torah. What's the first mitzvah of the Torah? Having children. Having children what? And teaching the children. And what's teaching the children? Come to shul on Shabbat. Let me show you the beauty of Shabbat. Let me show you the beauty of the Torah. And Abraham was the first one. Mezat Hashem. That it should be so clear to us that that's what life is about. And that we should accept the trials and the nisyonot as a way to uplift us, to, to bring out the best version of us to bring to, to allow us to live out to our best to, our, to, to the biggest potential that we can uh, 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 achieve in this world, and that instead and start to rebrand our life with all the hardships as opportunities for growth, and all the difficulties 
are just ways for us to make Torah decisions. And eventually Hashem will uplift you. Eventually you'll have that, that, that end finish line, that final checkpoint. And you think that it's going to be when? Olam Haba, yes. May we merit Olam Haba. May we merit to uh, e eternal life. Chaim Nitzchim. But if we don't, at least we have a little bit of it in this world. We have Shabbat, we have the performance of the mitzvot, we have the learning of the Torah. It's a man olam haba. The asti tanag al Hashem is here. And once you start to get aligned with that, day after day, week after week, month after month, you start to see the beauty of the religion, the sweetness of the Torah. And you start to see God in every single place in your life. And you're not being tested in a way because it's an angry God that wants to punish you. It's a loving God that wants to uplift you. Shashem and looking forward, looking forward to uh, our first class of Tomer Devoa on Wednesday night in Hollywood. And I just want to say thank you again to uh, Karen and Dovid for setting up this new home for uh, for. I think it's a good turnout for the first time. Hashem, may it grow, may it have more sushi, and we'll try to figure figure that out. And Be'ezat uh, Hashem also that we uh, uh, that we uh, continue to. Uh, uh, do the Tomer Devra over there is going to be with dinner as well. And a big, big thank you to Rabbi Kivman as well.